Welcome to the 2022 virtual open house for the winter semester here at Trent University. My name is Jonathan Samagaza. I am an enrollment officer here, and you are joining us for our forensics science session. If this is a session you're looking for, congratulations, you're already doing great. If this is not the session you're looking for, you might as well stick around. You might learn a couple of things here and there as well. Joined with me is an all-star panel of student and faculty alike. I am joined with Christopher Kyle, the current chair of the Department of Forensic Science. I'm also joined with Dr. Barry Seville, the current director for the Masters of Forensic Science um, here at Trent University. I'm also joined with two stellar students within the department, Kira Parr, a fourth year member of the Forensic uh, Science program, along with McKenna Campbell, a third year student of the Forensic Science program. And um, co-presidents of the Forensics Science Society. This will be broken down into two main sections. Uh, so we will have a nice presentation by Dr. Barry Seville, giving us a quick breakdown as to what this program is all about, what it really means to study forensic science, what you can get yourself into. And then from there as well, we'll also be able to get some questions um, asked to our students to give you a little bit of uh, that personal perspective um, and then from there, if we have time, we'll take a look at some of the questions in the live Q&A, um, and we'll be able to answer those. If we do not have time, however, we will be um, inputting some information to reach out to the Forensic Science Department as well um, at the later point of this presentation. So without further ado, Barry, the floor is yours. Um, you should be able to share your uh, presentation, but if not you want... You should be able to now. <laughs> can you see that? You can. Okay, marvelous, marvelous. Thank you very much, Jonathan, and, and thank you uh, for my colleagues for being here. Really appreciate it. And thank you all of the students who are joining us today. Um, we're going to talk about forensic science today, and I think that... Uh, I just wanted to start off with these images of our new uh, student center and the, of course, the forensic science uh, crime scene house there or the crime scene center. Um, now, a lot of you have probably heard about forensic science through television, and I, I really enjoy that and I enjoy these shows a lot myself. But one of the things that you need to figure out when you're coming to university to talk about or learn about forensic science is you need to know what the university does. And one of the things I wanted to emphasize is that when you come to Trent University, you're working with experts. And these are experts because they are experienced in forensic science and because they do research in the area of forensic science. So actually pushing the frontiers of forensic science. So today I'm going to talk about the Wildlife DNA Forensics Laboratory. It's an actual uh, functioning uh, lab at Trent. I'm going to talk a little bit about the research at Trent and, and the various research centers. Then uh, I mentioned briefly our expanding relationship with enforcement agencies. And then I'll get into some of an overview of the various programs that we have in forensic science, uh, including the, the BSCFS, the BFCFB, and the BFC, BFCFC. Um, as well as the joint majors. And then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some, um, some thesis options and some, some hands-on learning options. So one of the things that I think is really exciting about Trent University is that we have this major research center called the Natural Resources DNA Profiling and Forensic Center. And that's one of uh, our three major research centers at, at Trent that I'll talk about. But the one, this is very important to us because they actually have a forensics uh, science center. So they, they specialize in animal forensic cases and they've done casework in illegal trade and poaching, disease tracking, you know, animals involved in abuse or attacks, food fraud, uh, or human cases involving non-human DNA. So the instance where you have a crime committed and there is biological samples at the, at the crime scene that aren't of human origin. So those kind of things are done here. Now, a lot of the hands-on work in that area is directed by Dr. Colleen Doyle, and the whole facility is run by Chris Kyle. 
So it's, it's, it's something where we're actually doing casework here at Trent University. Now that center, the DNA center is also part of a, a larger group of centers here at Trent University where we do research. We have the Water Quality Center. This is a world renowned high class facility in mass spec analysis. And as you may realize in forensic science, not just the DNA that's important, but we also do analytical chemistry. And this is the place where it's really done. This is one of the top notch areas. And we have a lot of access to this for our students, as well as professors working in the area of forensic chemistry. We also have the Biomaterials Research Center, and here we can access instrumentation that just isn't available elsewhere, including the microscopy suites and the material characterization capabilities. We also use this knowledge base and this infrastructure to help us reach out to others outside the university for collaborative research including the Ontario Provincial Police, where we have a couple of research projects ongoing in the crime scene facility, as well as the Center of Forensic Science, where um, myself, Chris, and Sanella have uh, projects working with the Center of Forensic Science. And then we have this large number of placement host companies and agencies. And so we have collaborations with them through our students. And so it's a lot of, uh, of outreach and interaction for the education of our students. Now, I wanna remind you, we're talking university here. And one of the joys of university is that you get to work with people that are actually working in the field and doing the research, doing the cutting edge research. And so that's what our programs allow you to do. They allow you to work with those individuals. Now, the Trend Forensic Science programs um, these are what we would call our core programs. Um, and that's my term, so my, my colleagues might have different terms, but we started out with the Bachelor of Science and Forensic Science program, and that now has a cap of 80, plus or minus. Um, and we also recently developed the Bachelor of Science Forensic Biology and the Bachelor of Science Forensic Chemistry programs. And they have uh, direct, these are all direct entry programs from high school. The joint major programs are second year entry. You have a, a Bachelor of Science joint major or a Bachelor of Arts joint major. And we'll talk a little bit more about them in future slides, but you can do majors with any other science or with the science that's forensic science and any of the arts degrees. There's also a series of courses you could put together to give you a specialization in law and policing. And that's important if you want to perhaps go into um, the police services, and you might have some, some interest in that area, or even if you want to go into law. And then, of course, there's Canada's first, uh, probably the premier, but that's a little bit biased, Master of Science and Forensic Science program. And uh, as Jonathan said, that's what I'm a director of. So, let's get a little bit more into here. The Bachelor of Science, Forensic Science, or forensic biology or forensic chemistry. So three separate degrees. They, these are degrees that give you as a student professional transferable skills. So not only do you get this rigorous science background where you get background in biology, in chemistry, physics, anthropology, math, and various science electives that you could pick based on your interest, either psychology or computer science or even environmental resource science, for example. You get that, but you also get these professional skills, some training and job skills, some of the soft skills. So we think it's, well, I won't speak for the others. I think it's one of the best programs around for general education at an undergraduate level. The joint majors give you more flexibility. The core programs that I talked about before are relatively what I would call prescribed. That means that your courses are pretty well selected for you with, a, with few options, but there are some options. Here in a joint major, you get to select the major that you want to work with for forensic science. And as I said earlier, if it's a bachelor of science of forensic science, then you can pair that up with a joint major with biology, chemistry, physics, computer science, environmental and resource sciences, anthropology, 
mathematics or psychology. And so you get that joint degree. Now, one of the things to realize here, if you do a joint degree, a lot of the work is on you. When we, when we have our, our, our core programs, the scheduling is done by us. With this, it's a little bit more work for the student. The BA is similar. Now, I think this is one of the best Bachelor of Arts degrees around. Now, you're going to hear me say that a lot. But what I like about this, though, is that you'll get some science as well as the arts. And so it's almost like an applied uh, arts degree or science. And here you can combine the, the forensics with sociology, politics, women's studies, indigenous studies, economics, environmental and resource studies, and you're looking more at the policy side, and psychology, where you're looking more at, at, at things that are less scientific, and even anthropology. You have all of those options for the BA in forensic science. Now, if you have questions when you go along, type them in, and we'll make sure that we get them answered, and, and we can figure those out. So I'm talking a little quickly. Our time is limited, but I want you to, to realize you can ask those questions as well. Now, one of the things about forensic science is that it's an applied science. And this is one of the things that, that brought me to Trent University is the openness to applied research. And if it's applied research, then you need to have the opportunity to get some hands-on experience. And that's what we offer here at Trent University. And there's a few uh, major examples of this. Now, all of your labs are gonna have this hands-on material as well, but there are specific courses. There's a mentorship or field placement course. And this happens in third year in the Bachelor of Science Forensic Science program, the Bachelor of Science Forensic Biology or chemistry programs. And here students work in forensic specific related fields. They have networking capabilities that they can glean from these placements. And those networking things have often led to either further research projects or even later employment. And then later on in fourth year, you have a couple of different options to you. You can have a situation where you're addressing a need in the community through community-based research course, or you can have an experience where you're helping research to either increase knowledge or perhaps develop new techniques in specific areas. And this is an instance, which is called the research thesis course, where you're working with a professor who provides you the training either directly or via their graduate students and the funds for you to do the research. So that's our upper level experiential learning. I also want you to know if you're coming to Trent that we're always thinking about updating our programs, right? And we are hiring new faculty and we're developing new courses. And this is just a smattering. Now this is looking back a few years to, to over who we've hired. But basically, Dr. Kyle and I were sort of here initially, and we worked together to hire uh, uh, Rhonda Smith and then uh, Schaefer and Kahn and Dr. Martik and Dr. LaRue and Dr. Achitone. And so we have a great group of uh, scientists and educators now, as well as Dr. Smith, who's a uh, lawyer, a practicing lawyer. And so we have a really good base of knowledge to educate our students. And with that base of knowledge, we've also developed new courses, the bloodstain pattern analysis and wildlife DNA forensics. The new chemistry programs, I, I really like molecules of murder. Of course, we've got talks and we've got forensic psych because Dr. LaRue is a forensic psychologist, um, forensic anthropology, and then, uh, Dr. Martik's um, expertise is in biosensor development. So we've got some work in that area. And then my course, uh, I, which isn't on here is biocrime and bioterrorism. So it's one of the original courses that was here. So we're always developing. We're always coming up with new ideas. And then we've got the crime scene facility. And these are just some images from the, uh, from the forensic crime scene facility, looking at the, the garage and the seminar room. And all of that allows you to be prepared for the real world. So 80% of our grads are either continuing in education or working in a forensics related field. And here are a few examples of what our students are doing. 
We have students that are RCMP officers or OPP officers. We have students that are working at the Center of Forensic Science or at the coroner's office and in environmental labs, water testing, research, document analysis, working in hospital labs, the Toronto and York Police Services, Environment Canada. And we have a number of students that have taken their education from their BSCFS or other undergraduate forensics degrees and gone on to do medical doctorates or move into graduate research programs. Now, some of you might be interested, okay, this is all fine and dandy, but this seems like the end of my career. How do we start? Well, we start with introductory courses at Trent University. So the course that I'm most involved in is Introduction to Crime Scene Investigation. So this is 1011. And here we do crime scene analysis, which involves a lot of observation, note-taking, collecting evidence at crime scene, photography, moving on to those things. Then we have a similar background introductory to Canadian justice, where you get below the law in a similar overview kind of fashion. And second here, uh, and this is a course that was developed by Dr. Kyle, you take it to the next level. You learn more of the foundations of forensic science. You get a real good overview of the breadth of forensic science and a real focus on the scientific methodology. Because as you know, forensic science is the application of science to law. So that methodology is important. So how are you gonna get in? Well, you need to have for you chemistry, biology, English, or math to get in the core programs. We really like you to have uh, physics, and you're gonna to have to have at least a 75% average. Um, we're finding now with the number of applicants we have that that average is creeping up and up and up and up. If you wanted to go into the joint programs, you need to have 60 in English and a 75% average, and you really should have for you math. So you're gonna do all of that, and you're gonna do that at the number one undergraduate university in Ontario. And if you've got all those great marks, don't forget, we're also number one in scholarships and bursaries. So, whipped it through there for you, Jonathan, um, and hopefully we can get some questions. Absolutely, thank you so much, Barry. Also love uh, the plug there. Um, I say plug because it's true, we've been and are still the number one ranked undergraduate university for 11 consecutive years as of 2022. There we go. Not bad. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I always pick up something new every single time that we connect and collaborate on one of these sessions. So I'm glad I was able to continue that streak um, and kind of bring that knowledge kind of in my, I guess my every day as I kind of interact with my environment, I get to think critically about what I'm seeing on the news or again, what's popping up online, which is really nice. This is a good time though, to flip the script here on some of our students just to get a little bit of their perspective as to how their forensics career and their journey has gone to. I'm gonna open up the floor to Kira Parr first, and it's a pretty straightforward question, or at least it should be a pretty straightforward question. Um, and it's, well, why did you pick Trent? What, what, what do you like about your program? What drew you to forensic science? Absolutely, so back in my day, when I first applied, <laughs> we didn't have this gorgeous new crime scene facility we had this small little farmhouse and it was our crime scene house. And it was super cool. It was very realistic to a real crime scene. You would go in, there was old blood on the walls and they would set these crazy scenes that I thought was just so interesting. And I really wanted that experiential learning opportunity which students now get, despite not having a crime scene house, they have this even better facility. It's high tech. It's first of its kind and it is so cool you can set up crime scenes there's a garage there's seminar rooms it's awesome i'm not going to plug that too much you can look find out more information on our website but i loved all of the experiential learning opportunities we would get in the forensics program and that hands-on learning that you wouldn't get at many with many other programs so that was really what drew me to the forensics program in the first place and knowing that trent is a fairly small university so especially in the upper years i knew that i would hopefully get to get to know my professors pretty well um, and i knew that would be very ad advantageous not just to my learning um, but to goals and references in the future. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And 
how, I guess, how earlier on did you introduce yourself to Professor Kyle and Professor Seville? Was this like a third year endeavor? Were you in your second, first year? Yeah, so with Dr. Seville, it was in first year. Um, we all take his course in second semester, mm -hmm. um, the Introduction to Crime Scene Investigation. Great course, by the way. Not that I'm biased or anything with him being on this call. So great course. That's when I first introduced myself to Barry. Uh, with Chris, it was a little bit later with Dr. Kyle, just based on the fact that I didn't have him as a professor that year. Mm -hmm. So I think it was somewhere in my second year. I couldn't give you a specific date or time, but since then it's but, all history. Yeah, but it's still your first half of your undergraduate <laughs> career. I was expecting like a third year kind of introduction, but again, yeah. the, to see that professors are not only uh, welcoming, but also, again, willing to kind of fuel that creativity and fuel that passion uh, really speaks to all of you, especially for a program like forensics. Um, Chris, I see that you're back on. Is there a, a few words that you want to plug in there? Yeah, so I've been look, looking at the chat and, and I think, you know, at these open houses, uh, in March, the, the demographic that we're, we're probably speaking to right now is quite different. And I'm, I'm guessing a lot of you have um, already accepted your offers and you're interested in some certain things. The, the, the chats are asking some very specific questions that, that I can't type fast enough and probably aren't, aren't appropriate for uh, the broader audience. So what I would encourage everyone to do, if you've got very specific questions, and a lot of them are, um, please email forensicscience at trentu.ca and we will get, we will direct the traffic and to the right person to, to address your questions. Some of the questions uh, are, are always surrounding physics. Um, yeah, you, physics, you get physics courses when you're at Trent, um, but it, it doesn't hurt to have some level of exposure to it. That's why it's recommended. So, um, the other question was about placements and you get placements if you're a joint major and we find it actually difficult to accommodate the single major placements um, and trying to get all of those people in the right places. So the, the you know, there, there are some limitations. I, I think Dr. Seville um, listed them to the joint major with, with the huge interest in forensic science. And, and I was having a, an interesting chat with the Dean the other day and, and I don't want to take out too much time here, but we were just talking about in the last five years, we've doubled. Mm -hmm. and, and with that, the reality is that not everybody that applies to Trent's gonna get exactly what they want anymore unless they've got very high averages. And, and I wanna be really, you know, Dr. Seville is a wonderful ambassador and a wonderful salesperson. I'm the downer in the, in the, of the team here um, in that I, I, I'd like to be a very straight shooter as well and, and very direct. So, so, you know, the joint majors, you're going to get some wonderful courses. It's a wonderful degree. It's some wonderful opportunities. But there are some limitations. I think Dr. Phil mentioned to them. And, and those not all the same opportunities are open to them as the single majors that have actually made the commitment. I am going into forensic science, forensic biology, forensic chemistry. And, and we've really made room for them for, for some of the, the opportunities. And um, I just want people to be cognizant of that. I don't want people getting to Trent and then being dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's not what they told us before we came in. Um, I just wanna be really upfront with, it, when, with everyone mm -hmm. on those fronts that we have a lot of students and um, we're doing our best to accommodate them. And Dr. Sphil mentioned, we're always trying to reinvent things and try and make things better. And I think we've actually done that with a lot more joint, uh, pardon me, cross-listed courses with indigenous studies with the School of the Environment. Um, we're working on, on more joint courses with the criminology program as well. So mm -hmm. creating even more opportunities for those students. So just because you don't see it in the calendar now doesn't mean it won't be available to you if you accept to come to Trent. And, and there might be new opportunities that they, they haven't even been listed yet. So, so those are some of the, the notes that I'd like to provide. And mm -hmm. uh, I encourage people to, again, email forensic science at Trent you if you've got very specific questions. Mm -hmm. No, no, absolutely. And thank you again for, for uh, making those points as well. Um, I also find that emails, again, allow you to have a more fleshed out conversation as well. Um, so again, any and all of your questions, that's the place to kind of place them. And then from there, again, right, you have a paper trail. It can also provide you some resources if you're looking for those as well. Um, but we're going to go back into um, our questionnaire here. Um, McKenna, you're in your third year. So you're not quite at that finish line yet, but if you could tell us a little bit about what you 
um, again, what you loved about your program, what you enjoyed. Yeah, so as you said, I'm not quite there. I'm still reaching the end of my journey, but so far I really enjoyed the community that Forensics offers to their students. Like Kira said, it's quite a small school and Forensics is an even smaller part of the big Trent University picture. So you know your professors, like I've had Barry and Chris more than once as professors. So you get to know them, you get to know students because a lot of the times you're in the exact same courses with the exact same people every single day, all week. So the community is just a really big part of what I've loved most about Forensic Science at Trent. Absolutely, so much so that you are now the co-president of the Forensic Science Society. If you wanna give a shameless plug as to what you do and who you are. Yeah, absolutely. So we are a student run organization. So we are completely run by students and we also run all of our events for students. So we do fun events like activity night. We have um, unsolved case files coming up for the students here. And we also have a very exciting event coming up on the 14th. It is professionals night where we're having three professionals. One is in 2D and 3D crime scene reconstruction. We have a forensic pathologist and someone who works in corrections recruiting. So they're gonna come and they're gonna give a talk to us about what their education was like, what their career was like, and like the connections that they have between other people in their environments. So actually that is open to all of you, even if you're not currently a student at Trent, you're more than welcome to register. I'll put the link in our chat when I'm done speaking, but yeah, it's a great club. I really enjoy you get to meet your professors even more like me and Kira get to go to the department meetings we get to have opinions on the classes and what the students would like to see so I I love everything here if I'm being honest nice. there you go and she's not even paid so there you go take that no. <laughs> Jonathan there's a there's one question I'd like you to maybe try and address here and it's about um in-person tours of Trent um, are there going to be some in-person opportunities for people on, on the call to, to visit Trent? Absolutely. So we currently do have in-person campus tours that are running. Um, again, we are going based off of the uh, mandates that are in place along with, again, our health board here in the city. Um, so as things begin to open up, uh, we will reevaluate um, a lot of our initiatives, including our campus tours, to then see if we can open up our campus even more to some of our guests. So if you wanna uh, wait a little bit until kind of the spring months, you absolutely can. If you're super eager, if you know, Barry, Kira, uh, Christopher, Kyle, and also uh, McKenna kind of got you really excited about training and you wanna see it ASAP, you absolutely can go and book a campus tour. And we will also have multiple tours available during your March break as well, just to make sure that you're really able to take a look at what potentially could be your second home. Mm -hmm. um, but we are going to shift over to uh, one of our final questions that I have for our students. Um, and it's kind of fitting because we're, again, we just got off a conversation about, again, welcoming you into this new environment and this new chapter. Um, and I guess I'll start with Kira again and then go back to McKenna. Bring yourself back to your first year, right? Um, or even at the end of your first year. Do you have advice for students that, again, are applying, have gotten accepted, or are coming to Trent? right, for forensics, maybe they're excited, maybe they're a little nervous, what would you tell them? So I won't give my typical, do what you're passionate about or do what you're interested in spiel. What I will say, what I will say this time is reach out to different people for help. And what I mean by help is I mean guidance, I mean support, and I just mean resources. Trent and has so many different resources, whether it's academic advising, whether it's our uh, undergraduate academic administrator uh, at Forensic Science TrentU.ca, or students, the Forensic Science Society, professors. There are so many people who want to help you succeed. Academic skills, for example, coming into your first year, there is a big transition going from high school to university level work, and it can be challenging. So reaching out to those skills could not only be beneficial in an academic way, but we have other resources such as guidance and counseling, which can help you with more mental health supports or just personal supports and someone to talk to. So reach out to people. That's totally okay. And honestly, we, we really recommend it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. McKenna? So Kira, you said that you're not going to say the follow your passions, but I am going to say follow your passions because when you come to university, you discover so many things that you have never been exposed to in high school. Like you might not have ever been exposed to women's studies or indigenous studies or even like 
political studies, you've never had the chance to experience that. So if you do take an Indigenous course and you love it, there are options for you to still follow your forensics desires and discover something new. It doesn't mean you have to completely change your degree either. You can stay in core forensics or another program, but still have the opportunity to take courses that you enjoy. So I would say follow your passions and also get involved if you can, like join the Forensic Science Society or even just talking to your professors, talking to your peers, getting involved and following what you love will ultimately make your experience so much more rewarding. Absolutely. Um, wow. That was great. Thank you, Kira and McKenna, for that, uh, for those words of advice and for those pieces of, uh, of encouragement as well. Uh, the last question is usually posed towards our professors as to how we can get uh, students can get in contact. Um, but based on the conversations we've been having, also based on the chat, uh, forensic science at trenchy.ca seems to be the best way to reach out. Is that correct, Barry? Yeah, and I think it is the best way to reach out. Also, we've got the, the in-person open house coming up, right, Jonathan? Yes, so we are putting the finishing touches um, on our spring open house, which should hopefully be in May. So keep your eye on our events page at Trent University. Uh, so trenchy.ca slash discover uh, to kind of get those updates as they come in, along with anything else that we might be hosting along the way too. So trenchy.ca slash discover and forensic science at trenchy.ca. There we go. But it does bring us to the end of our forensic session. I'm sad. I know. I just love talking to you folks. On behalf of myself, on behalf of the university, I want to thank, again, Professor Barry Seville, Professor Christopher Kyle, Kira Parr, and McKenna Campbell for being here, sharing your insight, knowledge, and your experiences um, on this program that you have put so much time, energy, and passion into to bring it to our second group, which is you, the students, right, for waking up. Again, maybe you decided to dress up for this event. Maybe uh, you're doing like I'm doing, allegedly, and wearing sweatpants. I'm not wearing sweatpants at the moment. But you turned on your laptop, you asked your questions, you got curious, you got motivated, and you got inspired for what is probably going to be a very large and also a very rewarding chapter of your lives. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining us today. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and remember, you are exactly where you need to be. Thank you, Jonathan. Everybody. I know. I know.